Let's talk about the seven foods that have the potential to increase longevity. Now, the majority of illnesses and chronic disease relates to the mitochondria at the cellular level. Anything that can help support or maintain or improve the mitochondria can potentially help you live longer. Anything that destroys the mitochondria, you're not going to live as long. And at the very top of the list, there's one molecule that's very, very powerful. It's called PQQ. What it does is it increases the number of mitochondria. And it is also involved in the continuous recharging and discharging of electrons in the battery in your mitochondria. Then you get into what's called physics, which involves electrons. So we're dealing with the creation of a battery. So the mitochondria has a very important function of uh, creating ATP, which are many little batteries. And this molecule, PQQ, can actually do both. It can help discharge and release energy and help recharge energy as well. It increases the number of mitochondria. It's very important in your brain, in your cognitive function. And if you're missing this molecule in your food, you have a lot of problems. And it's 10 times stronger than resveratrol. And out of all the foods that have the most PQQ, it's the cacao. That is kind of the precursor to cocoa or chocolate. Then you have cocoa, which is heated, and chocolate is more processed. But even chocolate as a finished product, even though it's heated, has a, a large amount of this PQQ. Now, the uh, negative part of chocolate is usually comes in sugar. But if you were to get the, let's say the 85% or maybe even 90%, you'd get just a very tiny bit of sugar. And the other negative part is that cacao is very high in oxalates. So if you're prone to kidney stones, probably not a good idea. But even in general, if you just have a small piece, you're getting a smaller amount of these oxalates and it's probably not gonna be a big problem. But just to make sure as an extra precaution, if you were to have this, um, you know, a little bit of chocolate right after your lunch and you had some cheese, that extra calcium will help reduce uh, the oxalates being absorbed. But cacao or chocolate also has polyphenols. It's very, very high in magnesium, but polyphenols are also in berries, grass-fed meat, they're in grass-fed uh, cheese. In fact, I submitted some of our um, cattle meat into a research project and I got the results back and there was like super high amounts of polyphenols in the meat, the animal meat. So when the animals eat the plants that have the polyphenols, you're going to get that indirectly. So polyphenols are another thing that increases the number of mitochondria. Polyphenols also increase SOD, which is uh, something that helps to uh, reduce oxidation, free radical damage. It also is an enzyme that reduces hydrogen peroxide in the cells. It has the potential to decrease inflammation. If your gut microbiome is not very good. If you have a lot of digestive issues, you might not benefit from polyphenols. But if you have a good gut microbiome, okay, your microbes will help you absorb these polyphenols. And if the polyphenols are in the animal meat or the goat's cheese, that's probably a lot more bioavailable than consuming them straight from plants. All right, coenzyme Q10 is also used in our mitochondria especially the part where you're dealing with electrons. That's the last part of that whole cycle. So this coenzyme Q10 allows for these electrons to travel through and allows you to make ATP. Statins uh, block an enzyme that also is involved in this coenzyme Q10. And so if you're on a statin, you better be taking coenzyme Q10 uh, or else you're going to have a, a lot of muscle side effects. It increases the antioxidant capacity in your body. It's even a therapy for mitochondrial diseases, but it's also in liver, it's in red meat, it's also in fatty fish. All right, next one is L-carnitine. It basically helps you burn the fat, okay? When you exercise, L-carnitine helps preserve muscle protein. L-carnitine helps you recover from exercise as well. And take a while, guess where you're gonna get most of the L-carnitine. It's very high in red meat, the exact food that they tell you not to eat. So the next molecule is carnosine. This molecule greatly restores mitochondrial damage. It helps buffer the pH. It helps decrease inflammation. It gets rid of oxidative stress. 
It even decreases something called glycation, which occurs uh, in diabetics and it occurs when you're eating sugar. A lot of people that consume either sugar and protein or sugar and fat end up having this glycation, which kind of binds up the protein. Well, guess what? Carnosine will help get rid of that. And also carnosine delays aging. And take a while, guess what food you're going to find carnosine in? Red meat. Okay, the next um, molecule I want to talk about is called phycocyanin. Okay, phycocyanin. This is in spirulina. Okay, this is not an animal product. It's an algae. That molecule not only improves oxidative stress, but also it can increase mitochondrial biogenesis. It can increase the number of mitochondria. It helps protect the DNA. It helps repair DNA. Number seven, EPA and DHA. These fatty acids both directly improve mitochondrial function. They decrease oxidative stress. They improve insulin sensitivity. They reduce inflammation. And you can find these omega-3s in salmon, sardines. You're going to find probably the most in cod liver and cod liver oil. Now, since we talked about the foods that extend your life, let's talk about the most dangerous food that could shorten your lifespan. And I put that up right here. Check it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.